Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. So hello and welcome to the podcast. This is Failure Incorporated. We just kind of talk about lots of gaming stuff. And today we're here to talk about Marvel Rivals. Um, so I'm your host, Phil Go Punch. Uh, with me, I have Truixen and Arrow. So Sin, you want to introduce yourself a little bit and your, um, you know, how you found out about Rivals? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Truix Sin. I ended up hearing about Marvel Rivals through my friends and after which I ended up getting hooked over the two tests I've done recently. And Arrow, tell us about yourself and how you got involved with Rivals. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to say thanks for having me on this. This was uh, I'm very happy to have been able to join here today. Um, hey. So I am just like a competitive uh, player when it comes to all sorts of hero shooters, such as Marvel Rivals. Um, my team went ahead and competed in this most re recent uh, closed beta. We competed in the Asian tournament because we didn't have our full team of normal players, but we still wanted to have fun and compete, get experience. So, um, yeah, we made it to the semifinals in the top four and ended up, I think, third place. Wow. That's and uh, I'm, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to be here today and answer anything I can give insight on. Oh, my gosh. It's so cool. Like, I have to say, it's really exciting that somebody who's involved with, like, the competitive side even like, I don't know that you're here and we get to talk to you because I mean, Sin and I are like, I'd say we're pretty competitive people, but, and like, <laughs> I don't, I'm not at the level of being able to be like, I'm in tournaments, but it's always impressive to me to like watch the people who are good enough. Um, so yeah, I, obviously we're totally going to get your thoughts more on that. First of all, I have to ask what, what like, uh, do you play? Are you a vanguard or like strategist? Like what, what is your role that you play in these tournaments? Uh, yeah. So it's, it's funny. Um, I, I've played all sorts of different roles from other games, um, except for support supports the one I, I, mm -hmm. I just don't have the natural intuition or in inclination towards. Um, but for Marvel rivals in particular, I ended up being the, our vanguard player and um, there's, mm -hmm. Well, one of our Vanguard players, uh, and there's not so so much set roles when it comes to like a main tank versus an off tank in Marvel Rivals. They kind of are just just vanguards, and they they do different things. So, mm -hmm. um, I mainly played the Magneto character as well as Doctor Strange for our team. Uh, I plan to branch out more in the future, but those were the main mm. characters I played. Oh my gosh. So I, it makes me really wonder now, are you a master at using his, um, the portal? I think the portal is the craziest thing I've seen in a game so far. Like, mm -hmm. have you made any crazy plays with it? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I, I'd consider myself a master. I, I definitely have fiddled around with it. And uh, actually in the closed alpha, I've, I discovered something that I think not a lot of people have kind of realized yet is, um, there's a couple of very strong things that you can do with the portals that may or may not be necessarily intended by the developers. Uh -oh. I don't know if they've thought <laughs> this through. And it's not necessarily like, it's not exploiting or anything. It's using the mechanics themselves. But um, so something I've discovered is the first thing would be on maps where there's only two exits to a spawn, you can move both portals um, and put them both in front of the spawn door so that when they jump out, they'll just go right back into their spawn. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. And so that's a, tw that's a 20 seconds like automatic spawn camp. And there's genuinely nothing the enemy team can do about it. I don't even think you can portal out from spawn yourself because I don't think you can place portals in spawn. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably. We've seen with some mobility as well, the portals, it's very inconsistent too. Like some dashes just either phase right through it or have strange collision that ends up happening. Yeah, I've noticed that too. There's there's some really like finicky mechanics when it comes to using movement, using like ultimate abilities through them. Um, it, I think they still have some, some work to go through with that. But uh, the other main thing I discovered and this... This is something I've kind of kept close to my, my heart when it comes to the game, but I'd be willing to share it here is since you can move both portals, including the one in front of Doctor Strange, 
and it doesn't necessarily have to be in front of him. I kind of figured out in the last close alpha test that you can face both portals the same direction towards the enemy team to make sort of a portal shield. So on their side, they see two portals facing themselves, and they see themselves because they can see the other side of the portal. But on our side of that, I realized that the back of the portal is exposed and you can shoot through it. So it effectively mm-hmm. works as like a one-way shield that can't be broken. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's right. amazing. Wow. But it's all like kind of being able to set up to do that, right? Because you're, mm-hmm. you're pretty exposed while you're uh, making the portal. Oh, absolutely. This isn't something you can do just like mid-team fight, because the moment you, you start <laughs> making them, you'll just be completely vulnerable. It's really, really cool. Like, in that vein, though, talking about all this, like, first of all, I want to say, because I didn't even say this, Marvel Rivals is a 6v6 <laughs> PvP game made by Netties, and people are saying that it is kind of like an Overwatch kind of style game, which I agree with the Marvel IP. So... Since you you gone into it, I have questions like, were you able to get into it really early, like just when it came out? Um, and then I really want to know from there, how did you decide that you wanted to do the competitive you know, side of this game and your thoughts on the competitive side? It's a lot of yeah. things, but there we go. No, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to remember all of them. Uh, please, please help me out if I forget. But um, yeah, I think... The main thing for me with Marvel Rivals is, yes, I, I would agree it's very much Overwatchy. It's very much a hero shooter, very much, you know, ultimate economy and based around team fights, poke and build, building those ultimates the most effectively. Um, if you could just remind me the questions down the list. I'd oh, be happy yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's there's no comparison, really. I mean, it is kind of an Overwatch game. I mean, it has similar game modes. There's no, there's no denying that. But I want to know also, like, when you heard about Marvel Rivals, how early was it in the, like, were you one of the first people in the, you know, early stages of people being let in? Let's, let's leave with that one. <laughs> let's start sure, there. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I honestly heard about it right before the closed alpha test. Um, I, I oh, wow. know of people who, apparently there was a, an e- even earlier pre-alpha uh, that some people got access to, but I, I wasn't a part of that, unfortunately. I would have loved to be, but I, I didn't know right. of the game at that point. So, uh, But yeah, no, I learned about it through some friends right before the closed alpha began, and then we partook and greatly enjoyed it. So, Oh, yeah. And like the, the way of getting in was really interesting because it was, first of all, it was very difficult to get in in the first place, but I liked how they really allowed you to get your friends in if you were just diligent about it and you could get basically your whole, you know, stack in at some point if everybody kept giving the next person the key. So that's kind of an interesting strategy on their part. Um, But okay, so my other question is after you got in, what made you realize, wow, I really want to like play this in a more competitive way. And I want to know your thoughts on the competitive side of the game. Like, do you think it has, you know, some real potential? Do you enjoy the tournaments? I want to know your thoughts on how competitive is versus the casual side. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, when it comes to competitive, uh, the, what made me realize I wanted to play was just that it was fun. It was fun mm-hmm. to play the game just straight up, but where it really shined, as most six v six hero shooters tend to, uh, mm-hmm. was in a t- in team play in, in a six v six environment. Um, we did some sort of in houses with some friends. We played six v six in competitive mode, uh, and I just greatly enjoyed it. It was a, it just was just very fun. A lot of strategies, a lot of different things you could theory craft. A lot of different different compositions and um, the team ups, which we'll get to later. I'm I'm sure. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I I think just like how intricate, strategic, and fun the game was is what drew me. Um, I, as far as how is competitive, competitive is like I mentioned, really really fun. I greatly enjoy it. Just a lot of ways to 
play the game. I mean, that that's something that's yeah. very underrated, I feel, nowadays, is like mm-hmm. having the simple concept, the simple template of a game, um, and so many different ways to play it. So it, it becomes intricate, even though it seems simple. Yeah. Even with also like all the layers of the kits and sorry about that. Um, with the heroes, each one expresses so differently. Each one feels so dynamically differently too, from what they bring to the table and how they play. Absolutely. And speaking on the team ups, there's something that you don't really see other games of the similar genre bring to the table. Now, granted, some are definitely stronger than others and what we've been seeing for them, but still. It's a good change up, uh, whether good or bad, depending on however see- somebody sees it. I think they're net positive overall. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I-, I think I could agree with you there for sure. Like, I-, I think it adds another dimension, another variable that is just another layer of strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it also adds another layer of balancing for the devs to be competent at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, which we can also get to later, but um, it definitely makes the game more dynamic, I think. And I think it's a good thing overall. I really like how it's implemented, and I like the idea. Um, it definitely makes metas harder to ascertain, I think. Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, Go no. ahead. <laughs> All good. Uh, Magneto Scarlet, definitely on the stronger side. Oh, 100%. That is definitely one of the top ones. It, it is pretty crazy. That sword is ridiculous. So strong. Oh my god. So now I also want to ask, what about, what would be one of the weaker combinations? Oh, okay. So I have, I have to think back here. I would say, I'd have to say the newest one um, with Jeff and Luna. Jeff and- Jeff and Luna. Ooh. Yeah. So that one is is real tough. I I think it's not great, and I can give you my reasoning on that. Um, Wait, you dude. think that one's better than the Jeff and Groot? I don't know. I don't know. I think Jeff Groot doesn't feel very good. Uh Jeff Groot's. It's more cute. Yeah. Than Je- <laughs> Jeff Groot is definitely like up there for not not very powerful. Um, but I I think. Running Jeff and Groot themselves as the characters isn't the worst thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And just having the option to have that team up is not necessarily as bad as having to then play Luna and Shark, right? Um, mm. by, by being forced to play Luna and Shark for the team up, the benefit you're getting is, I believe Jeff's attacks do either slightly more damage or they have some ice effect on them that slows and makes the puddles slow. Mm-hmm. But... You're, you're having to run two main healers, and Jeff isn't really shooting those um, ice pellets or doing damage in his role anyway, uh, as well as his all being lackluster. It, it's just tough for me to viably see that being ever uh, something to do. Uh-oh, you're mm. talking to somebody here who's like a Jeff fanatic, not me, the sin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's right, though. In most cases, uh, Jeff really is just good for pumping out healing uh, whenever you stop to do DPS, which, by the way, the team up does do that. It gives all three more damage, AoE. It has staying power because you get that little slow zone that stays. But when you're taking time to mm-hmm. DPS with Jeff, someone's going to die because oh, he yeah. pumps out a lot of healing. Yeah, yeah it's it- almost antithetical to the role itself. Yeah, that's so true. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's h- kind of how I feel about his ult as well. It's like... You're, you're, you know, your role is just healing a lot. Like your, your ult, it, it's a lot of downtime to not be like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Unless you're good at it. Like I was always terrible at it. You miss a few enemies and you just die. Yeah. You just got left out there exposed. Now, out of curiosity, Crazy. one of the things that we want to ask is if you could have your ideal, you know, roster going, what would be the six picks that go into forming that? Yeah. Um, if we're looking at the best combination, um, now, this is a, a hard question, I think, because are we looking at the best total potential impact with team ups, uh, and, and there have to be team ups, or are we looking at just like the general best composition in the game, regardless of team ups? 
Ooh. Even simpler, actually. Let's think uh, just open queue ranked. What would be the ideal picks you see going into that? Okay. Ooh. Uh, yeah, definitely going to be the Magneto Scarlet. If we're talking ranked, mm -hmm. that is hands down the strongest team up I can think of to, to turn the tides of a game. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because... Scarlet in ranked is definitely, I think, much better because she's just able to kind of do what she wants and there's not as much coordination to deal with her, her flanks that have basically free getaways. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the sword itself is just so powerful in ranked. If, if, you know, they're not coordinated to the full extent, if their tanks aren't ready to, to block the Magneto sword, which lasts a long time, um, and de like to fully block that thing, it... If there's another Magneto, you have to dedicate a lot of your resources to it. Generally, the bubble and the full duration of the Magneto shield. Uh, if you're strange, it's going to eat up your entire right-click shield. Each slash, I believe, does 130, and I think you can get Ooh. something like 10 slashes off. It's it's pretty crazy. Oh my god, no wonder I've died so many times to that. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Oh, it's like 1,300 damage or something. And oh not only <laughs> that, the, the blade beams themselves explode on impact. So they have a small AoE themselves. I didn't know really? that. Okay, that's, that's huge. I thought it was just their width. As far as I can tell, I believe they have a small AoE. What? Holy. So you okay. Just, you can just collateral. Crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. So what would be the other picks that go around that? Oh, yeah. So... If we're talking ranked, um, definitely going to be the Magneto and Scarlet. A comp that we found that was extremely good was Ma Magneto, uh, Thor, and then you'd have Ooh. the Thor with a Storm. And okay. instead of Scarlet, we would run a Punisher or a Hela for that ranged pressure. And then we'd um. have Luna and Rocket Raccoon for the team up with the Punisher. Oh, yeah. Or if not Rocket Raccoon, you'd, you'd have to go for Mantis for that amazing ultimate. The ult, the damage boost. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Mantis is so good at like just enabling people. But I mean, like, rock, so many of the supports have um, amazing utility. It's so fun. Like, I, I'm a big support, <laughs> support main, but I, I love the DPS. But hearing about this is really cool. Like, how they are all working together synergistically. Storm giving, I'm assuming Thor, like, you know, a lot more speed and damage while he's getting in there. Is yeah. she, would you play her up, like, like further up with him? Yeah, so I think the ideal with the Storm composition is you're running more of a Brawl comp. Um, cool. I'm not sure how familiar you two are with, like, sort of the styles of, of team compositions from pure shooters. Are you guys familiar with, like, dive, brawl, and poke comps? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So that was sort of the best brawl is you'd run around with like a Magneto, a Thor, a Storm, probably a Punisher, and then a Luna and a Raccoon. And th that combo, just death balling around the map, um, is just incredible. You have Storm with the speed for the Thor, who, who then it benefits greatly from that. On top of that, the team up with Thor and Storm gives Storm a chain lightning ability. Oh, which right. It's so strong. That's yeah, crazy. It, it's I, I didn't think it was that good, but in team play, I, I saw it and I'm like, wow, that is a lot of damage. Wow. Yeah, Storm's pretty good. She's pretty powerful. Wow, so Absolutely. you basically have like three team ups going in that comp. That's pretty yeah. cool. And on top of that, Storm is definitely a centerpiece because in, in a game like this, ultimates decide the team fights. Mm -hmm. uh, and getting those ultimates is ultimately funnily enough, <laughs> the most important thing. So how is, how is the best way to get ultimates, to deal damage, right? Mm -hmm. And what better to get those ultimates by dealing damage, by damage buffing all of your team mm -hmm. constantly? Yeah, that makes sense. And it lingers. Not to mention, she can empower it. Yep, and when it is empowered, I think it's something like 15%. It's crazy. Wow. wow. Damn, that's amazing. I mean, that's kind of another, like, that leads into another question I have. Like, uh, what hero do you think is the strongest in the game right now? Like, by themselves, without team-up. The strongest character in the game right now, by themselves, without team-up. Mm-hmm. I know Magneto's up there. 
Magneto mm-hmm. right now, <laughs> like even without the sword, just a phenomenal character. Um, mm-hmm. We saw across the board, even in regardless of region, uh, NA tournaments, Asia tournaments, whatever, Magneto, one of the most picked characters by far. And surprisingly, not a lot of people banned him. Um, most would ban like a Scarlet so you couldn't have the sword, but they wouldn't ban Magneto as much. We, we did see them, but not as much as, say, a Thor ban or a, an Adam ban, for example. That is crazy. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten run down by a Magneto without a Scarlet a few times, too. The character is kind of crazy. The shield is amazing, especially if you put the shield on a Scarlet that is ulting. It's just kind of like, oh, cool. Look, she gets to do her ult. <laughs> now, for the Magneto bubble, does that have actually a damage threshold they can block? Oh, no, it actually does. I didn't think it did either, but it, it does. We've, we've seen that it, it can be bursted wow. down. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm learning so much today. Mm-hmm. This is great. When it came to like deciding who's the wow. strongest, I was actually curious to see if Venom was going to be mentioned, considering he's got... <laughs> The three health bars and almost always has access to some kind of a way out with his shift, his vine swing, since he can just engage with his F. Yeah. The amount of value he just Same. gets. Yeah. Um, I mean, when it comes to just overall value, there's there's two types of ways, right? It's like Magneto is just the all around best crazy tank because he has the most impact on the game. His ultimate can kill is like one of the only things in the game that can kill support alts. His shield has no health and is full duration so if you're timing that thing correctly you're blocking the most important bursts of damage in the game wow uh you have a team or self bubble that you can choose to use uh like it it is your choice every single time and what you need in the moment so it's flexible and you can you can save your teammates like if if they're making a misplay if they're misstepping if they're going in you can shield them from that so that's another point of impact from the game and on top of that, his just raw damage output is crazy because it's a ranged poke that has such high DPS if you're landing all the shots. Damn. Huh. All right. So learn Magneto. Got it. I'm and then gonna... when, it, when it comes to Venom, though, uh, I wanted to touch on that as well. Um, Venom yeah. is also extremely strong. The fact that he can effectively, he doesn't even need to play like a Winston would where you don't shift in, right? You don't waste your mobility. He can just shift in <laughs> straight up, go in from the enemy backline, and unless they've got like a Punisher with a, a Rocket Raccoon combo uh, team up, ready to go with that shotgun, he's not going to die. Like, oh, he'll yeah. burn him down to 100 HP, he'll press his one button, he'll get 1300 HP, and by, that, by the time you burn that down, he's already got his shift back. He'll just swing back out. Oh my god, I know. It has happened far too many times. Not to mention. Oh yeah. Oh, he can man. headshot. Oh yeah, if you track heads on that character, he does a lot of damage. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's that's terrifying. Oh my goodness. Okay, so so we we said that these two characters seem to be the strongest. So what's the opposite of that? Which characters do you think are like the weakest in the game right now? Oh, you know, as much as much as as I would love to say, um, the shark is a good character. I I can't get behind it at the moment. Um, uh-huh. there, there's too many downsides. I love Jeff. I love his concept, and I I think they they were thinking creatively with his alt. Um, but at the moment, the way the meta unfolds, running that character, you lose too much. It's not even necessarily that he's bad. It's that mm-hmm. other characters are so good. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how I've been feeling, too. I've really tried to play him, and I always feel like, oh, I do a lot more utility on this other support character. Uh, maybe maybe one day he'll be balanced a little bit more, but I don't know. It, it seems like a kit thing rather than just number thing. When but you're he's playing him. Cute. Yeah, oh, absolutely. He's a, <laughs> I think it's an amazing addition to the game just for... If nothing else, marketing and interest purposes, he's adorable, a great mascot. And uh, I think when you're playing him, it's just, it's so hard because like, you're playing him, you're getting some, some good value with his neutral, his you know, hydro pump healing ability is pretty good, the bubbles can be placed pretty strategically. 
uh, for the, those those health packs across the map, or if you want to support someone at a certain point, they're great. Um, it's the only support in the game that can boost healing, all healing received with those bubbles. Oh yeah. And the alt has the potential to be extremely valuable too if you you use it right. But then you're thinking about it when you're playing, and uh, you know the enemy uses a a Punisher alt. He's CC immune. Your alt can't do anything. Suddenly you're powerless and you're like, man, if I had a Luna ult right now, or man, if I had a Mantis ult to speed my team out, or if right. I had so many more impactful ults. Honestly, in most cases, his ultimate, I've been forced to use it as an escape tool, mm -hmm. mainly because that's five seconds of immunity to damage and you're invisible as well. They can't see where you're choosing. They can only see once you've selected. Yep, that's correct. That's smart. That, that really, is like, about it. Good way to get out. Um, yeah. Same thing with Storm ult as well. Though that one definitely can have a lot of good impact, though she is vulnerable while within it. Oh, but that's I, another yeah. pairing that we, we discovered is Stormald is one of the most powerful things, things in the game, and you can Magneto bubble that Stormald as well. Really? No, that's evil. Yeah, there's, no, there's <laughs> nothing insane. you can do. It's crazy. So evil. It is such a strong ult. Gosh. And then, like, yeah, I, I've seen Storms get killed immediately when using it because everybody targets her. Or I've seen her never die using it, so I can only imagine shielding a storm. Oh my goodness. She's such a cool character. I mean, the idea of like being able to almost have like Lucio abilities from Overwatch, like as a DPS character, it's so cool. And I kind of like that she's like slower moving because of it. Just like so strong. For sure. But oh my gosh. So okay. So, like, you've played the game a bunch of hours now. I have no idea how how long do you think you've spent in the game. I think I spent uh, like twenty hours. Oh, uh, too long. Um, I I can go <laughs> ahead and check here on my Steam. Let me see. Um, it's got to be, gotta. it's got to be at least a hundred. Um, wow. So okay. So have you played all the all the heroes yet, and like gotten a good feel for you know how they are and everything? All right, sorry, I just found the time. It's 194.5 Oh, hours. my God. 194, and that's between the previous test and the one we just had. That's right? correct. It's only between the closed alpha and the closed beta tests. Okay, yeah, so that's that's a lot of hours. Honestly, understandable. Um, yeah, so, okay, is there is there anything that you feel that's, like, really broken, that, like, needs a needs a a pass on it because i've heard a lot of complaints by a lot of people you know eh, hell is broken this character's broken so i want to know your thoughts like do you feel like there's characters that need adjustment yeah um for sure uh overall i, I do have to applaud the dev team though i think overall they've they've managed the balance like mm -hmm. pretty well um that's how i feel too yeah especially considering like how many crazy abilities there are in this game. Um, I think the primary thing that sticks out to me that I honestly would like to see out of the game, um, but if not out of the game, then just like majorly nerfed, are reses. Um, uh, I think the team-ups, especially with the addition of the newest character, they're just too impactful in the game. And they, yeah. they kind of, like, Adam, for example, breaks a lot of things. Um, we discovered in the tournament that we were seeing a lot of triple support comps because of it. Because what Whoa. you would do is you would run an Adam and a Mantis, where Mantis gets the res, Adam mm -hmm. gets the res, and then he has his ultimate, which can res the entire team. Uh, so that's two reses that are automatic on crucial support characters, meaning their uptime mm -hmm. is longer, which means they get more ultimate, which means they have more game impacting time uh in addition mm -hmm. to that you could run a loki to then either copy another support for support alts like uh, like a luna alt or like a mantis alt or you could copy uh an adam himself to do a res if you needed so uh in, in our, i think in our final games where we ended up facing some hurdles we were against a team that kind of abused the fact that we didn't have uh smartly i should add uh, they found out that we weren't the strongest on dive. We didn't have a lot of 
players that had devoted time to learning dive characters, myself included. Uh, so what they did is they ran a triple support comp where they would they would run the Luna, the Mantis, and Loki to copy one of those. So they'd have three different support alts. Oh my uh, god! Yeah, I knew it was just crazy. Um, but you no, know, I would say absolutely Rezus. I I don't like having triple support comps, and I I, I think just in general the idea of Rezus feels bad overall, especially when like. You're investing all these resources, you get a kill, and then, oh, he just has an automatic He's fail back. safe. He's just back. Yeah. Right, right. So I think that's not, that doesn't feel great. The second thing I would nerf is definitely going to be the Magneto Sword. Mm -hmm. I think that thing at 130 damage a swing that, with the explosions, with the duration of the, the, the whole ability only on a 30 second cooldown, it's just too powerful. Um, that needs to be toned down. And I'm saying that as a Magneto player. <laughs> um, so you're already ready for it to uh, be pulled away from you on uh, the next go. Of oh, yeah. And I, I honestly yeah. didn't, didn't use it a lot because of that. Oh. One, that was one of the reasons. I, I would kind of stay away from it. I felt like it was kind of cheesy, kind of just like automatic value. And I, I, I trust my teammates, so I'd rather put the... I'd rather oh. diversify the <laughs> impact rather than have to run the Scarlet. So you're you're a nice Magneto. Okay, I get it. I like to think so. <laughs> that is so funny. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. It's good to see that there are some things that they can still improve on. I've heard also as well uh, the interactions with some of the debris, the destructibles in the map, while not delivered in other titles, is something they're looking to push forth with this one, but. Sometimes you can get trapped in some pretty unfavorable situations with God. it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, there's situations where I don't even think it's intended to act like it does. Like, um, there's a, a third point on Shin Shibuya. Toward mm -hmm. the end, there, there's a little, like, archway that can break and fall down. And if it falls down a certain way, it can just, like, block where the cart's coming from. Oh, my God. I've and seen this happen. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, there's a lot of kinks to still work out i think for marvel mm -hmm. yeah i think i agree like i think there's some stuff as well where hit reactions feel kind of weird where you die and you're like what the fuck oh a spider-man killed me but i didn't see him on my screen and it didn't feel like anything happened to me i got killed by his web shooter or whatever um so like there's things like that to me that i'm still like Oh, if they add a little bit more punchiness to some of these like hits, I'll actually know I'm getting hit. Uh, that's kind of my biggest problem right now. Like I get killed by, I swear to God, it's Spider-Man who's the one who I get killed by a lot. And I'm like, oh, he was punching me, but I didn't really hear the noise of a punch or really recognize that is what was hitting me because he's like in and out so much, you know, barely on your screen. I don't know about you. That's the character who I was really annoyed with. I don't know if you guys at Ranked saw any Spider-Mans or Black Panthers or anything. Did you? Black Panther, not as much. Um, Spider-Man, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. the, be the better Spider-Man player is definitely very obnoxious to deal with, to say oh, the least. What a pain. Uh, but I, I will say, you know, as, as a Magneto player, I love seeing that Spider-Man because <laughs> I can just bubble whoever that guy's going on and then instantly shoot him. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> and one thing that really screws up a Spider-Man is if you land the right click on Magneto, it'll knock him ba back and he'll lose oh. all his momentum regardless if he's swinging or whatever and your your team can shoot him and he'll die. So Wow. I okay. I didn't personally I have it. to deal with him as much, but <laughs> I definitely can understand the frustration in a non-team environment in a ranked mode where your team's not looking out for you as much. Oh, uh Yeah. Oh my goodness. It, it's tough to deal with, especially as a support player. Oh my god, as a support, he is just the most obnoxious guy in the world, especially a good one. Ugh. But, okay, that, that's good to know. Okay, so literally, though, yeah, Magneto. Just everybody play Magneto, and you'll be you'll have a lot more fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. You, you've played a lot, almost 200 hours worth of this game. And clearly, like, I mean, I'm making an assumption here, but did you come from Overwatch? Oh, uh, yeah. Game? Yeah, that's okay. right. I, I have an Overwatch background. I've played probably around 10,000 plus hours of Overwatch. Oh my god. Uh, since 2016, so 
I've, I've definitely played my fair share, definitely too much uh, of hero shooters. Oh, wow. So, like, when you were playing Overwatch a lot, did you participate in a lot of competitions over there? Or is this a first-time thing? Yeah, so in, in Overwatch, I definitely did um, compete as well. Uh, I was in college during the time, and I wasn't necessarily competing as much, but... Uh, in in my spare time, I did. In I think when content, contenders first came out in season zero, Whoa. I joined a team and we were in like top sixteen for NA. Wow! Uh, yeah, we made it really far, but nice. we ended up uh, we ended up losing to oh, what was their name? Um, I wish I could help you out. Yeah. I don't remember. Season zero. That's quite some time back. I know. What are they on oh, now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Oh, season zero contenders. Uh, as far as contenders go, I don't know what season they're on. I think they are they even still running. I I have not been keeping up with Overwatch. I feel like I should know this, but I don't know this. I don't know. <laughs> it, I that's that's long ago, but that's still amazingly impressive. I mean, so like really comparing the two, Overwatch and Marvel Rivals. Do you think? Marvel Rivals is the Overwatch clone people keep saying it is? Or do you think it's something completely different or pushing the genre? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there, there's sort of this hive mind, like bandwagon mentality when it comes to the genre in general. Um, I think a lot of the, the population who's very familiar with Overwatch will see sort of any sort of even remotely similar hero shooter in the genre, and they'll see similar elements in that because of the nature of the genre, and they'll just say, oh, Overwatch clone, it's an Overwatch clone, but it really is just another hero shooter. Um, and, like, I mean, people were calling Gigantic Overwatch clone, you know? So... Oh my goodness. Like, Same thing with Paladins and so on and so forth. Paladins, Lawbreakers, even Crucible, which had nothing to do with like a... Like, there were just so many instances of this. But as far as Marvel Rivals goes, it has a completely different point of view. It's a third-person uh, hero shooter, which mm -hmm. already just changes the game from Overwatch because... There's a lot more strategy when it comes to like right peeking or um, using the terrain to look around without being visible yourself. That's a new layer of strategy regarding the abilities and the characters. There might be some similar elements, but that's just kind of how the... Like, there's only so many things you can do with a, a character's yeah. kit. Yeah, that's the hero, uh, the hero shooter genre. Exactly. The nature of the abilities and everything else that's available in the kit. That's just how that one goes. I do think that they are pretty unique. Like, they, they do feel very fun. And I've never, ever in my life, while playing Overwatch, felt like, oh, I really want to try this character. I really want to play this. But Rivals, I feel like I actually want to try a bunch more characters. I don't know why. Like, I think their kits are just so much more fun. Than a lot of Overwatches. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe Overwatch has been around too long, and I'm tired of it. Uh? No, I mean I think it's it's flashy, it's new, it's exciting, and I do think there is some argument to be made that there's more oomph in all the abilities. Like, oh, yeah. um, like Overwatch, a lot of the abilities are, you know, a little more realistic to the fact that to the genre, it's more yeah. like technological. Um, but with, you know, Marvel, we're talking about <laughs> anything from gods to superheroes to crazy stuff. So those yeah, things yeah. are gonna have more oomph to them, I think. And somehow they still all work together well. Like nothing feels like it doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't know, like it's fun and there's just like this huge pool of content they can pull from, which is kind of cool. Makes me like more excited about what's going to happen next. Like, ooh, what character do I know that they're going to add? I think that's a really nice edge they have over a lot of competitors right now. It's like a huge IP a lot of people know and can be excited. There's been through the grapevine of the extensive roster they're already working on as well. Oh, gosh. Who's next? Tell me. Tell me. 
Oh, uh, I'm avoiding the. I'm avoiding actually looking at the leaks and the should. spoilers. Okay. I've only seen a number of how many people, and that was just because that was on the title of the article. All right, fine, we're fine. Okay, no spoilers, <laughs> no po- spoilers. All right, so like, well, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to mention with yeah, Rivals is arriving pretty flashy. Everything is having an impact. Well, most things from the roster are having an impact with catching the user, but the real question is when it comes out because right now it's just betas what are your thoughts on the staying power for rivals yeah i mean the staying power like i like Felica was saying the ip itself is just a super prevalent one it's something everyone knows about you know everyone knows iron man they know um like Black Panther, the Hulk, uh, because of all the Marvel movies and, and their popularity. It's, uh, in addition to all the comic book nerds, like somewhat of myself in the past. Uh, so, I mean, I think the saying power definitely has an argument there, for sure. Yeah, I, I really think like, especially with how committed the team seems to be to making some pretty quality. I don't know. I I can't even say (laughs) some quality. The game is quality. It's high quality. I mean, every, every beta and alpha I've been in so far, it's like it runs smooth. It's fun. No matter what I seem to like, you know, have a full match. If people get disconnected right away, like it's, you either get filled or you get kicked out and you're on to the next one. And I love how quick the core loop is. It's just like, you're in, there's the end. We're not going to make you click through millions of screens, which so many games do. So I, I really love that. It is very good about getting you in and out of the game. And I think that alone is a huge step up from so many other of these games I've played. So just i'm really loving the game <laughs> so i don't know i'm really missing it right now are you guys missing Agreed. it oh yeah definitely feeling that marvel rivals withdrawal right now for sure um especially after grinding it so much <laughs> I, I but I, i'd have to agree like i think a lot of them have a lot you know a lot of the people at the studios marvel rival studios have their heads screwed on right uh <laughs> they, they've got good heads on their shoulders they've have a lot of good ideas when it comes to not only the authenticity of the Marvel IP, but how those abilities can be translated into a fun, balanced hero shooter genre. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they do it really well, like straight up. I I have to commend them on that. As far as like what's next, I would, I would be very surprised if they didn't have an open beta to stress test before they go to full launch. I, I think there's just too many cases in recent history for them not to learn from those mistakes of other IPs and other hero shooters launching, not ready for the, the stress test that is the gaming population. Uh, Agree. Oh hero God. shooter demographic. Yeah. yeah. It's tradition at this point. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So what do you think, though? 200 hours is vastly yeah. different to 10,000 a little bit and we are getting we are getting to the end of the question this is possibly my last one here once it's once we have it in our hands again what's that uh what's that time ratio going to be looking like for you uh in comparison to overwatch i know uh i've already got this uh marvel rivals i've already got it set on my list as probably my number one go-to i can't keep myself away from it for some reason <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's looking like it's going to be my main game for a while, for sure. Um, I'm someone who very much likes to find a game that it really fits what I enjoy mm-hmm. in competition, in aesthetic, in feel, in performance. And Marvel Rival, it, it, it seems to fit that bill for me at the moment. As far as the hours, uh, while I have put in quite the copious amount of time, already uh, hmm. 200 hours is nothing to the 10,000 and I, I, I do have a, a full-time job now so it's, yeah. it's definitely going to be a harder 
<laughs> harder call to, to sink that much time into it. I'm not I'm not a high school slash college student anymore. Oh, I know, right? We can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> almost makes me worry for what you might be scheduling for sleep. Oh, my, my sleep right? schedule was rough, especially with that Asian tournament. A lot of our matches were played at like <laughs> one, three, five, seven AM. It was crazy. That's not nice. was it a lot of caffeine that day? Actually, it was more melatonin. What I would do is, so for the mat, the matches we had, they would start at you know three a.m. or they'd start at one a.m. Uh, mm -hmm. And we we'd have to do like a one a.m. and then a seven a.m. match. And like, there's no way I'm gonna, you know, drink caffeine until seven a.m. That that'll completely screw up my schedule, especially with a full time job. So mm -hmm. what I did is I would just I'd take some melatonin around five six p.m. and I would just pass out until one a.m. and stay up. Oh my gosh. A complete flip of schedule, and then once everything was done, you just flip it right back. Yeah, exactly. That's that's commitment. That speaks volumes, at least, for how much you're willing to kind of put in just to even compete and continue to push the bar for this game. Yeah, seriously, I'm impressed, and I hope to see you guys win your next tournament. I'm believing in you. Want to say the name of your team? Uh, Any yeah, I mean, so we, we originally in the closed alpha test, we were the, the dead game fans as, as we've been oh, sort of dead game nomads of late Ooh, moving from one, from to, one another. to another. Yeah. Feel it. One failed launch to another, you know? Um, but, uh, this most recent time, I believe we were buff shotgun, uh, as a <laughs> sort of meme that. <laughs> to buff the shotgun. The Punisher? Yeah, the shotgun is oh, absolutely no. bonkers. So we do not actually want the shotgun buff, but it was, it was a very funny meme name for sure. I love uh, that. And I also just want to mention, um, you know, no one knows anything at the moment with Marvel Rivals as far as metas, as far as all that thing. Like, you can, you can bring your experience from Overwatch. You can bring all of that from Hero Shooters, even, even if you were a professional player. And... This game is entirely different with entirely different mechanics that you have to consider. So even if things work in the moment, they're likely just these sort of beginning sort of ideas that will end up formulating the real metas later on. Wow, I love that. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, the game just begun, really. So it's like we're really going to see how it evolves. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. I, I cannot wait for this game to come back. When is it coming back? Ah, not they enough. haven't announced yet, but I'm pretty sure everybody's doing the same thing as us. Suspensefully waiting to see when the next time that we get get our gremlin hands into there. I'm excited. I'm so excited for what is to come with this game. Seriously. And, you know, Thank you so much for your time. I mean, I think we're all out of our questions. We all agree the game is fun. We want the game. It's our main game. Uh, so thanks again for, you know, joining us. And I'm going to ask for everyone's socials in a second. Um, I'm Failco Punch. You can find me on all the socials at Failco Punch. And Sin, how about you? Uh, Sin, you can get me a uh, hold of me. Through the discords, uh, you can also find me on Twitch and YouTube. I'm going to be doing a lot more editing as the time comes closer to the line for Marvel Rivals. And last but not least, Arrow. How can everybody get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm on Discord. I have my Twitter, which is um, at Omni underscore Arrow. Uh, I, I have my old Twitch channel that was partnered, but I'm now a dead streamer, as, as it were. Uh, that it. would be Arrow Games on Twitch. And uh, other than that, yeah, if anyone has any questions or wants to get in contact, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. And this has been Failure Incorporated. Out.